This is One on One. There she is, Daria Alexander, Fox 5 News, News anchor. You can check her out 5 p.m. She's on with uh, Ernie Anastas and at 10 p.m. with Steve Lacey. Yes. yes. Hey, we've been wanting to get you in the studio for a long time. It's good to be here. Good to be I see. I, I, it's usually the other way around. Yes. This is very strange for me because I'm always asking you all the questions. You're always educating us about everything that's going on. Uh, just about a little politics. Every, well, politics, <laughs> lots of things that correspond to life. Yeah, more importantly, we have you here. By the way, can we plug Daria's book? Because she's not just a great news uh, anchor and reporter, but we got this, Bob. Uh, the quick and clean diet, lose the weight, feel great, and stay lean and, um, for life. By the way, people don't know that you are a trained chef in New York and Paris. Yeah. What, in your spare time? No. <laughs> when this when did that so happen? So many years ago, I always loved to cook. And um, I just thought, for a little while, I thought I was going to go to law school when I got right out of school, because my brother's an attorney, my father's an attorney. And um, I thought I was going to do that, and I was actually working in the DA's office and uh, was kind of like, ugh, I don't know if this is it for me. And I started taking some cooking classes at night, and I loved it. Mm. And then I enrolled into a uh, French Techniques program and went through that, and I just was so happy, and it was so awesome. And then I um, went to Paris and, and took some pastry classes, and I just loved it. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll do something with this. And then I kind of chickened out and thought, oh, maybe I need to do something that's like, I don't know, more traditional and standard. And I was always a, a news junkie, always. always a news junkie, no matter what. So I, I thought, hmm, maybe, um, maybe I'll look into this. You grew up right here in New I York. I grew up in the city. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, so many amazing things happen in the city, good and bad news-wise. And it's always exciting. I knew I was definitely not the type of person who wanted to sit behind a traditional desk. Now I sit behind a news desk, but uh, you know the regular office desk and be you know surrounded by four walls and be all my, my, by myself all day. So uh, I just I thought I want to be out and about. I want to be covering stories. And I love the fact that every single day something different is headlining. But the business has changed in so many ways. You started out at uh, News 12 Long Island, and you, you go around the country. What, name, name the places, because I looked okay, here. Okay, so, like, right, so I was a Texas, reporter. Texas, Ohio, uh, Illinois, West Virginia. Did West I get that right? West Virginia, yes, yes. Iowa. You forgot Iowa. Oh, oh, oh so, what Excuse the heck? me, I, I lived in Davenport, Iowa. You? Yes. Is and, that and what we, you have to do to come so, back to be a star yes, in New you York? Yes, it's like being a roadie. It's like being, <clears> you know what? It's like, it's like having a, a band and wanting to play Madison Square Garden someday. But you have to start in those, Paying you know, dues. little places, those little podunk towns where you are doing your gig. It's the same thing, a singer, a dancer, it's, it's all the same. What's it like to do the news twice a night right here, the number one market in the country, um, in this environment, in the social media environment? Because when I've been on the on set with you, again, I'm, I'm not, I just do political analysis this is obviously a very different job. Public broadcasting, we're not here to have opinions, we're here to ask questions. Right. But I sit there and watch, you are not, people think you're a news, oh, you're an anchor, you're reading. No, he's working 10 different things, oh, yeah, getting we're information. Tweeting. Yes. We are getting tweets. People are informing us about things. I mean, forget it, when breaking news happens, you know, we've got the AP wires and Reuters and all that stuff, but we're getting tweets from people. You're a reporter, researcher, I mean, producer yeah, right on the desk. Absolutely. Uh, we're copy editing stuff because stuff happens so fast now. They don't have time. This is not the old school way of the anchor where it's like, as soon as I get a script in there and I put it in the teleprompter, you can read about this breaking news. It's like, no, there's a shooting at a mall in New Jersey. Uh, the SWAT team is there. It's crazy. There are people inside. We think the guy is still inside. Go. And we'll let you know. Just go. And I, you know, I worked at the Fox News Channel. I moved from yep. Dallas to the Fox News Channel. And so 24-hour cable news is kind of where I really got my training as far as that is concerned. And that is super, super, super intense. So when I came over to Fox Local, it wasn't so difficult for me to do that because I had been used to doing it. And um, it's a lot less time because you're still pretty much within the confines of a one hour show because mm. that's what I do. When you're in cable news, it's like they sit you down and you may not get up for five hours. hours. Now, hours. that with saying, 
when there's a hurricane like Sandy, we were doing the same thing. We were sitting down for seven hours. And you covered 9-11. And, uh, and I covered 9-11. And then I went to Afghanistan. I covered Daniel Pearl, the beheading of the Wall Street journalist. Um, you know, he was beheaded. Uh, it was horrible. And it was shown online. I went over to Pakistan and covered that trial. So, yeah, I've definitely done my rounds. But, yes, in today's environment, it is just like, go. You just speak. And so... Along with that, there is obviously, we live in the kind of environment where people catch things, they see things, they see everything played out. It's pretty much like a reality show on the desk. So if you say something wrong, if you screw up, it's all right there. People catch it, you know. It's so interesting. Sorry for interrupting, Guy. No. But you had the experience at the Fox News Channel, <clears throat> and you didn't have an opinion show. You're always a, 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 an objective. Right. I did Fox News Live Hours. Different. Right. Well, you know what's interesting? I always wondered about this with you. Yeah. Because when I've been there with you and Ernie, it is the commentator, the analyst's job to do analysis. Mm -hmm. But I'm sitting there thinking, Derry's got all kinds of information. She, you're holding back on analysis and you're holding back on your opinion, per se, because it's not your job. Is that hard? It is. It's very hard. And because um, I know I, I, yeah, I, it's hard, I, but I have to say, honestly, news is moving away from that even. Go I mean, ahead. not to the point of. You know, politics like you have a mayoral race that happened in November here in New York City. You don't you don't step out that way. We're right. not that kind of like you know opinion journalism program. But when say news of the day, when silly things happen, or there's a viral video, or there's an opinion about somebody throws out something, and we do a story about it, and it just seems like it's really dumb. Like, say, a parent is doing something and it just seems ridiculous. It's impossible to hold back, particularly because I'm a parent. Uh, and, and we kind of let our opinions in in that way. So the audience knows we're alive. They know we're thinking people. Mm. Uh, but when it comes to really hardcore things, you know, like voting and stuff like that, we don't, we don't go there. Talk to me about juggling. It's hard. I don't mean juggling in the circus. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Because we talk about kids the all the time. Talk juggle. about that. Yes, I never, I never belonged to the circus, but my life is a circus. Uh, it's really hard. I mean, listen, I can't say anything. There are mothers and fathers who work two, three jobs. I, you know, this is a great gig, and I'm not even saving lives. So um, I'm informing people. But I really can't complain. I'm super fortunate. It is not easy. Nothing's Describe easy. Describe your mom life. We don't live in easy times right now. My mom life is that um, I, my, I, I do evening shows, so I go in uh, early afternoon, and I see my kids in the morning basically for about 20 minutes. I get up with them, move them through to get them out of the house. Uh, sometimes I take them to school. Sometimes uh, babysitter will take them to school. And then they're gone. And then they're gone. And I do other things, you know, whatever kinds of responsibilities I have. And then I don't see my children awake until the next morning. Until but you love your work morning. and you love your life. I love, my, I love my work and I love my life and I feel very stimulated. And a lot of women have told me, uh, women who have come before me, who have who decided not to work at all, that in some ways they were a little bit resentful and they didn't feel like they were contributing to society in the way that they wanted to. And they, some of them held it against their children. I think it's incredibly noble to stay home with your kids. And it's an, it's an amazing, amazing thing. And sometimes I wish I could do it. But I think that my kids appreciate me because I have a lot that I can bring to the table. And they think it's really cool. And you brought a lot to public broadcasting. And by the way, in her spare time, just oh, wrote yeah, this yeah, book. Yeah. You know, sometimes I yeah. stay up until 5 o'clock in the we'll morning. We'll talk off the air. Thanks, Derry. You're Thank the best. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Barnabas Health, St. Peter's University. United Water, Qualcare Inc., New Jersey's Credit Unions, Johnson & Johnson, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.